right angle lightning cable plugged in. That's how you would do it if you don't have a headphone jack. If you Hello don't. folks and welcome to NetCruiser. Bit of an update in this video, like I wanna go over a bunch of stuff, uh, specifically about the Xeon Smooth Q. I have quite a bit to tell you about this and show you about this. So my video for the Smooth Q is doing very well. So it has over 30,000 views on it. And that's in three weeks. And I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Like, you know, how can I use external mic? Um, a little bit more about the modes. I made two videos about it so far and they're both doing quite well, but I've since gone on a trip using it. I wanted to just give you some updates about how to use it effectively. One thing people want to know was how do you use an external mic on it? Because um, with the way that the phone sits in the gimbal, may or may not block the mic port on your phone, um, as well as just getting an external microphone on, on something is gives you way better audio. Oh, speaking of that, where is my external microphone? Here is how you could just use a Smooth Q, and, and a lot of people would, where you just have the phone, just on the gimbal, nothing external, no external accessories, nothing at all. Uh, it's the easiest way to use it, but it's going to give you the worst audio, uh, as well as you're going to run out of battery life on your phone, most likely if you're shooting in any kind of a harsh environment that's not, you know, California. <laughs> it's funny, I see so many of these videos that are shot in California about these gimbals where it's, you know, beautiful weather all the time. You try shooting outside in Canada where it's friggin' miserable, frigid weather, uh, and your phone dies in about five minutes. And it's a problem with the iPhones in particular is that they die very, very fast. There's a few accessories I would suggest getting to uh, augment your gimbal usage that doesn't have to be just for a Smooth Q. This works on an Osmo Mobile as well, including there's a brand new version of this, the Smooth 4 that just came out, which I'll uh, likely make another quick separate video about or I'll talk about at the end of this video. There's a couple things you might want to get to help you along with power and external mic and uh, just giving you a better grip on the device. External microphones. I really like this one because of its versatility. This is the Rode VideoMic Me, uh, and it's designed to just plug straight into your iPhone. So that's with the windsock off. It's designed to just plug straight into your iPhone. Um, but, but the big thing is you wanna have a windsock. Uh, anytime you're shooting inside, you wanna have a windsock. So I'm gonna show you some footage of using the gimbal with uh, a camera on my head. This one, the Sony uh, Action Cam, where I'm showing how I was shooting with the Smooth Q with an external mic. But you have to realize that when you're using a microphone, there's two different types of aux cable. The smartphones use what's called a TRRS, which has the three lines in it, and that works fine for smartphones, and that is exactly what this is designed for. So this has the three lines on it, so it's a TRRS. Now hook up a male to female TRRS cable of significant length. Uh, and then what I do is I plug this end into the microphone, I plug this end into the phone on the gimbal, and uh, I'll just set this up and I'll show you how I make that work, as well as I'm always running the windsock. Now if you see this little pigtail here, this is a Rode SC3. This is a TRRS to TRS adapter, and that's why I suggest going this route, where you have the video mic me, is because this is TRRS, and you can adapt it from TRRS to TRS. Without this cable, I can use this mic on smartphones, smart devices, and with this cable, I can use it on my action cam, or any camera that has a microphone input. So that allows me to use this one microphone for everything that I have. If you ever want to use this microphone on a non-smartphone device, you need to be able to adapt it to TRS. So that's just something nerdy that you maybe didn't know is that not all aux cables are the same. Uh, and this you can most likely cannot find a TRRS extension lead like this in a store. Go on Amazon. I'll provide links for all of the stuff that I'm showing in this video on Amazon so you can find it and buy it. Let me throw this on a tripod because that is the best, one of the nice features about the Smooth Q is it has the quarter inch jack. So I'm going to throw it on a tripod just so I can hook up the mic and wiring and show you how that works. Uh, this is the Smooth Q on a tripod with the microphone 
clamped on to the little tripod arm. Because the Video Mic Me has this little phone clip, it allows you to clip it onto things. So I typically wouldn't run this kind of a setup, but if you were going to have it in like a static uh, tripod environment, this totally works. I've got the cabling plugged into the phone here. Now I'm using an iPhone 6S that is the last iPhone that has a headphone jack. This makes it easier than a lot of new phones. Uh, hopefully if you have an Android phone or some other phone that has a headphone jack, whether it be on the bottom or the top, it would not be straight in the middle where you might have interference. The problem you run into, let me just turn this gimbal on for a second. The problem that you might run into is if you don't have a headphone jack style phone, then you only have the lightning plug or the USB-C or micro USB type cable um, coming out and you have to adapt it. So what you would need for that is you need to have a right angle adapter. Now this one is USB-C, so if I had something like a Pixel phone that only has a USB-C connection, Pixel 2 I think they, they killed off the headphone jack. So I would need to run my USB adapter and then I could have my headphone jack adapted off. Get a 90 degree adapter, either USB-C or lightning or whatever type of thing your phone uses if you do not have a normal headphone jack. Uh, and then that would adapt out to a, to a TRRS. You would need to, probably your phone came with an adapter, a dongle that is like USB-C to a headphone and then you'd be able to run this same cabling. That's how you would do it if you don't have a headphone jack. If you do have a phone with a headphone jack, it makes it a hell of a lot easier because then with my phone, I can run power and headphone jack. Um, so I suggest if you're gonna buy a phone specifically for doing videoing, to get one that still has a headphone jack. So here's an LG G6. It has a USB-C connection, but it also still has a traditional headphone jack on the top. So I can run power and a mic at the same time. Because like I said, the biggest problem, the biggest flaw that I found with these type of devices is the battery in the phone. The battery in the phone will die extremely fast. So let me show you my little fix for that. Use a right angled lightning cable or a right angled USB-C cable. I'll be able to plug this end into the gimbal because these new gimbals have power out and I'll just have this cable plugged into my iPhone at the same time. I have tested this real world. Uh, I posted an Instagram story about that when I was doing a motion time lapse. So, uh, I haven't balanced it again, but this is with the power cable, a right angle lightning cable plugged in with my headphone jack plugged in for mic. So this is, we're getting to almost the, you know, the holy grail of setup here where it can do everything that you need and plugging the phone into the gimbal uh, running the gimbal with a mic. You could do this all simultaneously while mobile. It would totally work. It still has a pretty good range of motion. Like you don't really have to worry about it getting snagged up unless you're doing circles with it. Uh, and most of the time you're not. So it still gives me pretty much a full range of motion, even with the cables plugged in. The biggest takeaways is get a right angle adapter, for, uh, either a cable or um, female to male to female of whatever type of phone you have, as well as then you need a TRRS cable, the Rode Video Mic Me, a tripod, or when I'm actually out shooting in the wild, I really like using this. And this is the Joby Action Arm, I think, Action Clamp, Action Arm, something like that. This has the quarter inch tripod jack on it, so you can have it on the bottom. This clamp, which is meant for clamping onto a pole and stuff, I clamp this onto the microphone, basically running it in something like this type of an orientation with this tripod screw pointing straight up, where I can have the mic either on the top or the bottom if I'm holding it upside down. I'll show you some clips of how I've done that in real life. Uh, I want to show you the performance of me using this setup on a tripod 
and trying to get like a long motion time lapse. It was well over an hour that I was trying to shoot for. My phone kept dying. Um, so then I was trying to scramble around and try and find a way to power it. So I did use this cabling through the gimbal and I tried powering on the gimbal at the same time. So I had power running into the gimbal, power going through the phone. Then my gimbal was actually running out of power too because I didn't have any of the stuff pre-charged. It was bad planning on my part. I had been using it that weekend already. I didn't recharge everything. So everything was at like a 20% level. If you're trying to daisy chain the power around where I've got power going into the input on the gimbal and I've got power coming out of the gimbal into the phone, it was trying to charge the phone first. So it's up to you on trying to decide what's more important to you, what, what's gonna die first. You know, you're either gonna lose the motion, if you're trying to do a motion time lapse, which is what I was doing, you're either gonna lose the motion first or you're gonna lose the power in your phone first. What's the worst case scenario for you? If you lose the motion, you're fine, you still record. If you lose the power to the phone, your game's over. You know more footage, right? So you wanna make sure your phone is charged up first. So that's probably why it defaults to that, where it tries to shove as much power into the phone as possible. So let me show you that stuff, and then I'll come back with some final thoughts. All right, some final points about this type of a setup is that you have some choices when it comes to the app you're using. So there's the ZY Play, or you could use like the native camera app, or it could use another fancy, you know, video camera. ZY Play gives you the most options of how to configure the gimbal and all that stuff that you would want to be able to do. The problem that I found with ZY Play is that if the phone does shut off in the middle of recording, your footage is lost. The app size gets larger, but there's no way to recover the footage. I ran into that problem last year with the DJI Osmo. And with the Osmo, there was a recovery folder where I was able to get in there and, and recover the footage, but not so much with ZY Play. So be aware of that. I also ran into some issues with ZY Play where uh, the exposure gets a little bit messed up, as well as I ran into an issue where when I was shooting with this app, it lost audio sync. So even on an iPhone, it's not great. It's not 100%. So I have had some issues. If you wanna do the motion time-lapse and stuff, you have to use their app and it's great for that. But if you're gonna just be shooting like normal stuff in the field, I honestly don't really recommend using their app. I would say use the native camera app on your phone because it's more reliable, gets better cleaner footage, as well as on an iPhone at least, when your power is almost out of power and it's gonna shut off the phone due to like temperature issues because it's friggin' Canada winter again, it saves the footage. So I was able to run this for maybe 10 minutes using the native camera app and I was able to save that very last clip. If I was recording using ZY Play, that last clip, even if it was 10 minutes long, completely lost. So be careful about that. If you're gonna use ZY Play, make sure your phone is charged up. I appreciate all the views on that first video and I'm hoping that this one can, can help you guys out. If you enjoyed this or it helped you, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already because I upload new videos all the time and I want to be able to show you the new stuff that's coming out as well as thank you for watching. Take care.